Child, these children. <laughs> these children are going to have me late. They're going to have me choke them. So, good morning, y'all. <laughs> Rushing out this house, these dang on children. <laughs> they can't find this, they can't find that. I tell them to find their stuff before we get up in the morning. We get up in the morning, they still don't have one child. Want to take a tore up book bag and take library books in a tore up book bag. <laughs> the other child want to wear any type of shoe instead of what goes with what he got on. So now we searching for shoes. Woo, these children. Y'all want, y'all want two boys? Y'all want them? <laughs> oh lord i hope you guys had a wonderful weekend i did it was such a good weekend um <clears throat> had an opportunity just to get a lot of stuff done we grilled um i got a chance to just relax in my uh backyard that um normally would have took me a little while to do but because i had to rush and do it um because of um, my grandmother's uh, repast, um, it was done. So I was able to actually relax in it today. Um, so <clears throat> this thing, it, it's like it doesn't want to go down. I keep turning it down, it gets louder and louder. Um, but anyway, so um, what God put on my heart this weekend, he, he gave me again, like he did last weekend, which I love it. Um, he gives me, a, he gave me quite a few things um, to talk about. So I have some things for um, the next couple of days, which is great. Um, the one of the things he wanted to me to talk about was integrity. Um, and when I when I looked up the word, I wanted to get the definition because I wanted to make sure that when I talked about this, um, I understand what the word meant and you understand what the word meant. I know that we everybody knows what in integrity means, but do we know the actual definition of it? And that's what I wanted to make sure I knew. So um when I looked it up, it says the quality of being honest and having strong, strong moral principles and moral uprightness. That one is the one everybody's familiar with. Um, if you have integrity, you have morals about yourself. Um, you're very passionate about those morals and you apply that to your life. The other definition that to me was the one that um, I didn't know and to me made sense. This is a state of being whole and undivided. To me, that was very deep. That does, that took it much deeper than just having um, integrity, than just being um, moral about the things that you do, um, applying it to everything that you do, that you have some standards. Um, but to the second definition of the state of being whole and undivided. To me, I took that to mean that I'm not teeter tottering. You know, my my the, the decisions I make or myself as a whole is not divided. I'm not deciding on if I walk with God or not, or um, if the decisions I make are shaky or not stable. You know, um, and that's having integrity. You know, you want to make sure that. Um, when you're dealing with people or you're dealing with God that you you have integrity that you're wholeheartedly in it you're not divided in it like you're not teeter-tottering between this and that um, and I'm not saying that um, let's say you have you know a battle or something because the flesh wants to do bad that's just what the flesh wants to do um, it's it dies so it's always going to fight the spirit it wants to do bad it does not want to do good and I'm not talking about that when I say um, don't be uh, um, divided. What I'm talking about, because I'm talking about making a conscious decision, making a conscious effort to be, see, that's why you got smacked because you're running through stop signs. Um, I'm talking about um, being holding your decision being conscious in your decision so when you have um thoughts like i was teaching my son yesterday when your mind um tells you this is what i want to do i want to do what's different than what my mom told me is the correct thing to do 
we all have that we all have that that conscious mind that says hey this is what i want to do i don't want to do the right thing i want to do what i want to do even though i know this is wrong i want to do what i want to do but i had to teach my sons that you you have to talk to your mind just like your mind is going to give you these um uh things that goes against what you've been taught you still have to talk to your mind and say to your mind you know what that's not the right thing to do i don't want to be divided in the decisions i make i want to make sure that i'm aligning um the things that i know are right with the things that are right and i do those things i don't want to just know that they're right and not do them you get what i'm saying so if i know that fighting is wrong and I still fight, then I'm undivided. I'm not whole. That I did something that went against what I know is right. So, God was just on me about, and then he led me to the book of Job. And Job was talking about how um, he has to do things with integrity, even in the midst when God had took everything. You know, he was talking about why would I not, why would I curse God? Why would I say, you know, that he's wrong? You know, then I will be just as right. I mean, just as wrong as the people that has um, never believed in him, you know, and I have to believe that all things because he told me that I have to believe that all things are going to turn out for my good, whether it looks bad, you know, especially with Job. He, he lost everything. His kids. You know, his wife, his all of his riches, he lost everything. And he still was like, I'm still going to honor God. That's wholeheartedly. That is wholeheartedly. That is, un you are not divided. You are whole because you know what your morals are. You know that no matter what, I believe the word of God. I believe what he has said to me and I trust and believe that no matter what happens to me on this life because things are going to happen whether you trust God or not that's life things are going to happen so I'm still going to move according to the integrity the morals that God has instilled in me even when it things doesn't look like they should be going my way or even when it's things that I want to do that goes against what is the correct thing to do? I'm still going to move in a way that represents God, represents the morals, represent the principles of what he's taught me, you know? Um, and is this easy? No, it's not. Because like I said, the flesh wants to do bad, especially when things are not going your way. You want to do what you want to do. And your, your mind, the way your mind works, when you're in the midst of a storm, it kicks in to survive that's what your mind does it wants to survive so it kicks in to survive and you have to have the conscious mind to say you know what i'm going to seek god first to help me to survive through this instead of trying to do it on my own that's where worry kicks in because we don't have an answer for the things or the storm that we're going through that's what worry is when you don't have an answer and, and one of the favorite, my favorite songs, um, I can't think of his name now, but he has a song, Why Worry and Pray? Because if you're, if you believe God, if you believe in the things that he say about you, that he's going to take care of you, he will never leave you. Then why would you worry about anything? You have to be able to walk in peace. You have to be able to still hold your integrity, still hold your morals in the midst of storms, in the midst of um, when things don't look like they're going to change. You still have to continue to hold the integrity and the love of God in you. You still have to represent um, who you are, um, who God has instilled in you, who he has told you that you are. Um, and, and and that's what he kept talking to me about last, I mean, this weekend was like, no matter what, no matter what it looks like, no matter what you see, you know, don't do it without me and do it with integrity. Do it with your morals that I taught you. You know, don't go against what I taught you, no matter what the world is telling you. And, you know, that's a lesson I had to really, truly learn because I did do a lot of things that I believed 
you know, because the world was saying that it was okay, that it was okay for me to do, but it wasn't morally right. And that didn't settle with me. So give me a moment, y'all. I'm going to take the, um, my baby in here and I'll be right back. Um, let me back up a little bit. Let me get her in here. Um, uh, give me just a second, you guys. Who did that? Jeremiah? Huh? Jeremiah. Jeremiah did that? Well, Jeremiah did a good job to buckle your seatbelt. I just told you, you're going to take this and share this with someone. You don't have to want it. Here. If someone wants a banana, you say, here. Here you go. Come on. All right. Uh, Walter says, believe it or not, it's easy to be to do wrong than right. My dad told me why I worry about something you can't do anything about. Right. Um, and, and that's that's the that's the whole point. Like, um, why worry, about, especially about things you have no control over? You can't change, you know, do what you can and then give the rest to God. Um, but yeah, so. And that's what that's exactly what I was saying. Like, it's so easy to do wrong because especially if you're living life in the flesh, that's why it's so easy to do wrong. You're living life according to what your flesh wants, what your flesh desires instead of allowing or making this flesh submit. That is the main thing you have. This flesh has to die every day, every day until the day that you take your last breath. This flesh will be dying. And it doesn't want to. <laughs> the spirit is eternal. It never dies. So it's going to fight what is not going to die. It doesn't want to. So it wants to fight the the um, the spirit. So you have to put that flesh under submission of the spirit. The spirit controls it, can control it if you allow it to. The spirit can let the body know this is not of God. This is not morally right. This is you better than this. That that conscious mind you always hear. Everybody talk about that you don't hear God. Yes, you do. Every time you want to do something incorrectly and you have that little voice in your head that is saying, no, this is not right. This is not what you should be doing. This is not of God. This is not how you were taught. That is God reminding you who you are, reminding you what he taught you, reminding you you're better than this. You don't have to submit to the flesh. You can make it submit to you. And it, it's all in your mind. It's all in your mind. That's why if the enemy gets your mind, it's over. He has that. He can control you because that's where everything happens in your mind. You, you have to control that. You have to shut those thoughts down. Um, a lot of times I pray and I say, Lord, control my thoughts. Help me learn how to control my thoughts, especially when those thoughts don't align with yours. Lord, that's not a thought of you. You know, um, but yeah, that's God was just on me about that, about integrity. Um, and then <clears throat> my sons, when he be, after he had gave me that uh that word to talk about and then he sent me to joe my sons did some things um they're always fighting and i get it that's what boys do but i told them if, if you're gonna fight if that's gonna be something you're gonna do it needs to be in a controlled environment get on the wrestling team you know but you don't just fight out in the streets that's not how we handle things you don't just fight your brother because you're angry about something that he did or said that's not how you handle things we use our words and we respect each other's space you don't put your hands on somebody else. You, you just don't do that. You know, you don't get that angry where you have to put your hands on somebody. If that's the case, then you walk away. Even if you're play fighting, 
the the problem with play fighting is you can't control anybody else you can't control their actions you can't control how they're going to respond to what you're doing you everybody like i explain explain to them everybody parents don't parent the way i parent so if another kid that you're wrestling with comes over and their parent hasn't taught them you know not to fight or um not to i mean to treat each other with respect and they come and they hit you upside the head with something you can't you couldn't control that that's why your mother told you not to wrestle there's consequences to things you know so you have and i told my kids why did you do it anyway and, and one just said because i wanted to and i had to explain to him like that's not integrity you didn't use the morals that i taught you you didn't use the the standards that i taught you that that's not of god and that's not of this house this is not the way we handle things you know we don't handle things that way we handle things according to the will and way of God. And I and like and I told my daughter the same thing. Like you didn't do what you were supposed to do because I wasn't watching over you. I shouldn't have to watch over you. The morals and the integrity that I taught you should even when I'm not around still apply. It still apply because I've I've given you the tools that you need to be successful in this life. I've given you everything you need. Now, if you choose not to use it, that's on you. It's nothing I can do after that. And I'm not going to sit and worry myself about it. I'm going to give it to God and let him deal with you. Because you know what? He can discipline you much worse than I can. But is there going to be discipline for me? There is because I wouldn't be a parent if I didn't. But I'm just letting you know that I'm not going to worry about it. I'm not going to stress myself about it because you didn't use the tools that I equipped you with. You have a choice to do it or not to do it. And when you when those consequences come, you best believe I'm going to make sure that you are um, standing up and being a part of those consequences. So when my sons, if they want to continue to keep fighting and when they get older, they end up in jail. Guess who's not coming to bail them out? Not their mom. I won't. You better call dad because I'm not doing it. I've given you the tools to do what's right, to do what's morally right. So that's what um, I just wanted to talk to you guys about. Just integrity. I'm at my destination. I'm going to go ahead and do a prayer. I'm sorry. Watcher says, preacher, oh, preacher, you preaching this morning. This is such a powerful word from the Lord. Thank you. Um, this is definitely from the Lord. He put this on my heart to talk to you guys. He even gave me a verse and everything. You know, I wasn't going to even tell you. I told you I wasn't going to talk about, you know, the Bible verses. But he been on me about these verses. Like, okay, go read this. Go read that. And he even pointed out to me. So, um, I guess he do want me <laughs> to use these verses. So I got to do what the spirit says. I got to do what God tell me to do. Obedience, you know, morals. <laughs> but anyway, so I'm going to do a quick prayer. So our father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil forever and ever. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory. Father, we come to you this morning morning asking you and thanking you for instilling in us morals and principles that in line with your will and your way lord we thank you for filling us up with integrity so that everything that we say and do represents the morals and principles that you instilled in us father god lord we thank you lord for us being your children father god and you treating us with the love of a father father god lord we thank you for going ahead of us and preparing this day lord god removing all obstacles out of our way father god we thank you for sending your travel angels, Lord God, to get us to and from our destinations, Lord. We thank you for favor on our jobs, Father God. We thank you for opening doors that would normally be shut had we not seek you, Father God. Lord, we thank you for covering our children as we send them off to school today, Father God. Lord, place your hedge of protection around them, Lord. Father, give them favor with teachers, principals, um, uh, counselors, librarians, friends, enemies, anybody that they come in contact with today. Father, we ask that you grant them favor, Father. Um, as long as it aligns with your will, Father God, if there's a lesson to be taught today, we ask that you open the minds of our children so that they are able to understand and comprehend and that they, um, receive what it is that you have for them to receive father god lord god we thank you this morning just for being the most high god we give you honor and praise father god lord we thank you father i thank you for touching each and every one of the people that are listening to this lives father god i thank you for opening their ears to hear and their hearts to receive what you have for them in this message father god lord god i thank you father for just 
being the wonderful God that you are, I got to keep giving you praise because there's so many things you've done for us that we've taken for granted, Lord God. The simple things waking us up this morning, Lord God, waking us up in our right mind, Father God, giving us use of all our limbs, Father God, being able to see and hear, Father God, food on our table, Lord God, a car, Lord God. There's so many things that you blessed us with that some of us take for granted that don't that don't understand that some people don't have these things. Some people didn't wake up in their right mind. Some people didn't have um, use of their limbs. Some people are not able to see, Father God, and we take those things for granted. And we want to just say thank you, Lord. Take this time out to tell you thank you, Father. We ask these prayers and blessings. In the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen, amen, and amen. So thank you so much, guys, for taking time out of your day to listen to me, to pray with me, to come on one accord with me. Um, again, the message for today was integrity. Um, we want to make sure that we're moving with integrity, that we're applying that to everything that we do um, and that we understand that integrity means a state of being whole and undivided. We're not divided in the decisions that we make. We're firm in the decisions that we make. We're firm in knowing that God has us and that he's taking care of us and that all things will will turn out for the good of us who believe uh, so you guys have a wonderful and blessed day i love you i love you i love you i love you there's nothing you can do about it so accept it and move on to god be the glory he loves you more you guys have a wonderful and blessed day i'll talk to you tomorrow bye-bye